Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. In the Old Testament, there are numerous characters that are seldom mentioned or discussed in videos, especially those shrouded in mystery. Some of them are only briefly mentioned without their names being revealed. However, in ancient writings and books from different biblical canons, we can find more detailed information about these characters. In this video, I will delve into the history of Ham's wife, exploring her origins and curiosities. This is another episode in our series on the matriarchs of humanity. Don't forget to like and keep watching the video, Ham's wife, the mother of African peoples. Returning to the discussion of the wives aboard Noah's Ark, in this episode, we are exploring the wives of Noah's three sons. I will share information about Ham's wife. These women who were aboard Noah's Ark were part of Noah's family, who survived the Great Flood, as narrated in the book of Genesis, a fascinating chapter of the Bible. These brave women survived alongside their husbands, although the Bible does not mention their names. However, their existence is confirmed in Genesis, chapter 6, verse 18, when God said to Noah, But with you, I will establish my covenant, you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. In this way, we are exploring the account of the women aboard the Arkansas. In ancient Jewish tradition, we find a remarkable manuscript called the Book of Jubilees, a fascinating and extremely ancient text. The book presents a history of Genesis and Exodus, supplementing the biblical account with additional details such as genealogies, names, precise dates, and specific calendars. It also addresses the history of the patriarchs, religious ordinances, and the laws observed by the ancient Israelites. Although the Book of Jubilees is not considered canonical by most Jewish traditions and is not included in the standard Jewish or Christian canon, it is valued by some Jewish communities and is regarded as an important text for understanding religious thought and the history of Judaism in the Second Temple period. Moreover, it has been preserved in various languages and manuscripts, including Ethiopian, Greek, and Latin. This book is considered canonical by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and also by Jews converted to Judaism, known as Beta Israel, also known as Falashas or Falash Mura. Many of these converts are descendants of Jews but also have African roots, particularly from the descendants of Cush. In the Book of Jubilees, we find the names of the wives of each of Noah's sons. Ham's wife, for example, is called Neltamach in this manuscript. She is described as the mother of many peoples, including African peoples and other groups with origins related to Ham and his wife Neltamach. Neltamach is remembered as the matriarch of African peoples. Her descendants spread throughout the continent, giving rise to various cultures and civilizations. Her legacy is deeply rooted in African history, influencing traditions, languages, and connections to the land throughout generations. According to the Sibylline Oracles, Neltamach enjoyed extraordinary longevity, living for centuries and centuries. This was due to the fact that she belonged to a pre-Diluvian generation, born before the Great Flood. During that time, people had incredibly long life expectancies, with some living up to an impressive 900 years. Ham's wife, Neltamach, lived for many centuries, and during this extended period, she uttered several remarkable prophecies. According to the Sibylline Oracles, all three wives of Noah's sons were prophetesses and made predictions for their generations and the nations descended from them. Neltamach, like the other wives, played a significant role in transmitting prophecies to her descendants. In Christian traditions dating from the second century after Christ, specifically according to a Syriac Targum, which is quite similar to the Book of Jubilees but slightly later, the Syriac Targum, also known as Targum Pseudo-Jonathan or Targum Yerushalmi II, is a translation or paraphrase of the Old Testament in Aramaic, erroneously attributed to Jonathan ben Uziel. Unlike better-known Targums like Targum Onkelos, for the Pentateuch, and Targum Yonatan, for the Prophets, the Syriac Targum primarily focuses on the historical books of the Old Testament. It is believed that the Syriac Targum was composed sometime between the 6th and 9th centuries AD. 
It is known for its peculiar literary style and significant differences from more traditional Targums. The Syriac Targum is not widely used in Jewish or Christian contexts today and is relatively less known compared to other Targums. However, it provides interesting insights into the interpretation and translation of the Bible in antiquity and can be a valuable resource for scholars wishing to explore the literary and cultural traditions of Judaism during the time it was produced. The Christian writer known as Saint Hippolytus also mentions a tradition, but he changes the names of the wives of Ham and Japheth to other names. He writes that Ham's wife's name would be Zedkit Nabu. Therefore, according to this tradition, Zedkit Nabu would be Ham's wife. It's truly fascinating to note that in Christian traditions, there is an ancient legend related to Ham's wife during the time of the flood. According to this legend, God instructed Noah to destroy the first person who announced the beginning of the flood. However, at that moment, Ham's wife was baking bread, and when the water suddenly rushed out of the oven, destroying the bread, she exclaimed that the flood had begun. She began to shout and proclaim that the flood was starting. God then, according to this second-century Christian tradition, decided to revoke his earlier command so that Noah wouldn't destroy his own daughter-in-law, in other words, not destroy a member of his own family who was about to be saved from the great flood. This is a fascinating curiosity present in Christian traditions about Ham's wife. As mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter 10, and the book of Jubilees, Neltamach, Ham's wife, had four sons with him, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. It's worth noting that the first three sons of Ham and Neltamach gave rise to various nations, primarily in the African region. However, Canaan did not give rise to African peoples, he was the ancestor of the Canaanites, also known as the ancient Phoenicians of the Middle East, who were enemies and rivals of the Israelites for many centuries. Despite Canaan not being the main focus of the biblical narrative, his name is associated with the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan is often mentioned as the region that would become the inheritance of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob after their journey there. This land would include geographic areas that are now part of Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, and Jordan. It's interesting to observe how these biblical accounts and ancient legends shed light on the history and origins of different ethnic groups and cultures. The main ethnic groups that originated from Neltamach's lineage included primarily the Sumerians, notably the Sumerian people. This happened because the ancient Sumerian civilization had its roots in the descent from Kush. It's important to mention that Nimrod was the Sumerian pioneer who colonized the region mentioned in the book of Genesis, which later became Babylon. The Bible describes Nimrod as the first to be a mighty man on the earth, Genesis 10 verse 8, and states that he became a mighty hunter before the Lord. Furthermore, Nimrod is credited as the founder of several ancient cities in the Mesopotamian region, including Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna. We have a video on our channel about Nimrod and his kingdom, I'll leave the link to that video in the description. Additionally, a significant portion of the local population in that region had Semitic origins, including the Akkadians, Chaldeans, Assyrians, Syrians, and Arameans. It's interesting to note that, in the case of the Sumerians, their ancestry traced back to Kush due to the influence of Nimrod. It's also notable to highlight that the ancient Egyptians were descendants of Neltamach, Ham's wife, through her son Mizraim. The name Mizraim is often associated with the region that would eventually become Egypt in biblical and historical tradition. In fact, the term Mizraim is used in some Bible translations as an alternate name for Egypt. While Mizraim is not a central figure in biblical theology, he holds historical significance due to his association with the region of Egypt. Egypt played a significant role in the history of the ancient Near East and is frequently mentioned in the Bible in relation to events such as the enslavement of the Israelites and the Exodus led by Moses. Another people descended from Neltamach are the ancient Nubians, who were often referred to simply as Cush in antiquity because of their connection to Cush, one of the sons of Ham and Neltamach. In the Bible, the land of Cush is mentioned in several passages, 
and the Kushites are frequently mentioned in historical and geographical contexts, especially in relation to Egypt. Sometimes, the word Kush is also used more broadly to refer to distant or exotic lands. In addition to the Nubians, it's also important to emphasize that the ethnicities of Ethiopia, as well as the peoples of Eritrea, Somalia, and the entire African continent, have their roots in the descent from Neltamak and Ham. It is crucial to emphasize that the mistaken interpretation of the curse of Canaan as something that fell upon Africans is false and harmful. This idea was invented by people who did not correctly understand the biblical text. It's essential to clarify that the curse of Canaan is not related to African peoples but rather to the Canaanite people of the Middle East, from the land of Canaan. Incorrectly associating this curse with Africans is a distortion and a miscontextualized interpretation of the Bible. The curse of Canaan is a narrative found in the Bible, specifically in Genesis 9 verses 20 to 27. In this account, after the flood, Noah plants a vineyard, becomes intoxicated, and becomes uncovered in his tent. His son Ham sees his father's nakedness and reports it to his brothers, Shem and Japheth, who cover their father without looking at him. When Noah learns of what happened, he curses Ham's son, Canaan, and blesses Shem and Japheth. This story is not related to Africans but rather to the Canaanites and should not be used to justify any form of racial discrimination or prejudice. The misguided and racist interpretation arises from the unjustified connection between the curse of Canaan and the legitimization of the enslavement of Africans. Advocates of this distorted interpretation claim that Canaan had ancestral ties to Africans and thus used the curse of Canaan as religious justification for the enslavement of Africans. However, it's essential to emphasize that Canaan was not the progenitor of African peoples but rather of the Canaanite peoples of the Middle East. Therefore, the curse of Canaan cannot be attributed to African peoples. In the next episode, which will conclude our series, we will discuss the matriarch of all humanity, Noah's wife. So, we would like to ask you to leave a like and share the video with people who are interested in learning more about these figures from the scriptures that are rarely mentioned. Additionally, we invite you to leave your comments with suggestions for other mysterious characters you would like to see in future videos to learn more about them. Thank you for accompanying us thus far, and we wish everyone God's blessings. See you soon.